Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude here in Houston, Texas. Today I am doing another long-awaited video, an update on the 24 by 18 by 18 leopard gecko true bioactive terrarium that I built for you guys about eight months ago. I wanted to show you how the Terra Sahara has progressed, how my gecko has progressed, and you guys can see his health, as well as how the tank itself and all of the little beneficial bugs and funguses that are being utilized to have the terrarium be self-cleaning, self-maintaining. Definitely subscribe to me on YouTube, check out my Facebook page, and of course, visit the BioDude outlet in Houston, Texas, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. And, of course, check out my website, The BioDude. So, as you can see in front of me, I have the tank. Um, at the very top, I have a 22 inch of my mixed spectrum LED. Um, his tank does have a 16 on it uh, on the other side, but just for moving everything uh, the, to illuminate it, I wanted to use something a little bit larger. On the top, I am utilizing a ceramic heat emitter with a nanodome, um, a 40 watt ceramic heat emitter, uh, which has been working great, actually. Um, I've only had to replace it once since I set up the video, so it's been lasting a long time, and it creates a great hot spot right here where that ghost wood is that he does come out and bask. I swear to God. I also do provide the Reptisun UVB. And I do now carry the Arcadia UVB line, which is really, really happy to be able to get that because that was not an easy product to obtain. Uh, he is fed a variety of different insects from roaches to waxworms, mealworms, superworms, uh, crickets, hornworms, a bunch of different stuff. Um, and to, main, to make sure that he's getting health with the very diet, I do gut load my insects with my bug rub and I do give them the moist version of the bug rub when it turns into Play-Doh. And I do also supplement with uh, different types of calcium and vitamins. So I have a lot of different types on my website. So when you see the white label, the white label is a lot like the pink label and the aspect of um, it has the exact same properties with the exception of the white label. The granules are significantly larger. A lot of leopard gecko keepers like to provide straight calcium to their gecko so they can eat it. This is the calcium that I would recommend that you do that with. And you simply take a little bit of this and put it into a small container and just put it in the cage. And your gecko will go up and eat it as needed. And then the crickets, um, roaches, whatever bugs I'm feeding have a rotation with herptivite and calcium with vitamin D3. Which is very important to make sure that you're providing the proper nutrition. So I'm going to open up the terrarium here and it has progressed. I just gave it a light mist and I really want you guys to look close how everything is growing. So I don't know if you guys remember this aloe ciliaris I planted in the back. It has taken over here, 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 and here. The Mexican basil that I planted, as you can see, has also taken over here. And it does have some bald spots, which the insects have been eating which is excellent. The substrate is, is maintaining in extremely good levels. As you can see, it is dry on the top. And then as you go further down, you can see the different humidity pockets spread throughout, which is how these plants are able to stay so healthy. The humidity of the actual terrarium itself is low. Back here where all my excess sphagnum moss is, it is around 50% when he goes underneath his tube back here. The rest of the terrarium is under 20% at all times. He is hand misted once a day. I do not have him on my mist king for about 15 seconds. Uh, he, do, he does like to generally hide in here and here because his hot, his hot, hot spot and hot hide are on this side, whereas his cool, also humid hide is on this side as well, but it does give him a lot of different options to see where he wants to go. The cork bark, which is really interesting, is I put a bunch of superworms in here, and there are still superworms living in here, but a lot of the broke down, the cork bark pieces that were in here, the really small pieces, are completely gone. They have been completely broken down by these guys. Now, I do have a couple of these living in here, and these are the evolved form of the superworms. Completely harmless to your lizard. And all of these guys were in here. So I pulled a bunch of them out to uh, start my own colony. But I am going to put a couple of them back in. 
just because we do like having lots of different types of life in there, breaking down as much organic matter as possible in conjunction with the bio shot. There are also some roaches in here, such as very small dubias, and there is one lone Madagascan hissing cockroach that was in this tube here, and it is now gone, so I'm not really sure where it's at. But it, all the different decomposition cycles have been continuously going on. Let's lift up the water just and let's see if we can see any bugs. Oh yeah, there's some isopods right there. It's a bunch of babies underneath the water dish. You see, see them all moving in there? So not only does this have the bio shot, it has super worms, it has the evolved adult form, it has roaches, and it has excuse me, um, the, all the different other biological drivers in there. And you can see how the tank's progressed. It's healthy, the soil's healthy, it's maintaining its proper nutrients base level with the proper water level within the terrarium itself. And now I'm going to show you guys Prometheus. So I've had a lot of people tell me, dude, you can't keep leopard geckos and stuff like this. It kills them. You're a terrible person for keeping them on dirt. You don't know what you're talking about. Here's Prometheus. I want you guys to look closely at every single one of his fingers. Look at that, perfect. Perfect shed there, perfect shed there, perfect shed here, and a perfect shed here. Let's look at his base. I know, dude. I don't see any type of fungal or other type of issues because the, the Sahara is maintained perfectly at right where it should be. But the biggest thing that sticks out to me is his weight. He has such a varied diet just in this cage, that in this cage himself with all of his options, that honestly, we give him more food about what, once a week? Yeah, about once a week. Everything else is self-sufficient in here. And you can take a good look. You see how he has a really fat, he does have a regrown tail, that's okay. Um, but he does have, you know, his regrown tail and he does have a nice, nice bit of bulk to him. And this is the cork bark piece that we did remove. Oh, yeah, we gotta let him get in there. Yeah, he's going right into his, uh, his humid back there where it gets pretty, pretty moist, he really likes that. But you can see the cork bark. So and this does look like normal cork, but you see all these edges right here. This is all this right here was eaten by these little black bugs and the roaches that are in here. As they break down, it goes into the soil, creating organic nutrition that cycles through your soil. So there are so many different drivers in this terrarium that are consistently keeping everything happy, healthy, and alive, including the very happy leopard gecko Prometheus. And again, guys, my name is Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. I really hope you guys liked this updated video on the Leopard Geckos 24 by 18 by 18 Terra Sahara Terrarium. The dude, the dude abides.